This video gives some facts about the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of symmetric matrices. Recall that a symmetric matrix is a matrix like this one, whose transpose is equal to itself. Let's start by finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this symmetric matrix. To find the eigenvalues, we'll write down the characteristic polynomial, the determinant of a minus lambda i. The eigenvalues will be the values of lambda, for which that's equal to zero. Lambda times i is the diagonal matrix with lambdas on the diagonal, so when we subtract that from a, that amounts to subtracting lambda from each diagonal entry. We need to take the determinant of that. So I'll expand along the first row, and that works out to this expression, which, after some algebra, gives us this polynomial. I'll set this equal to zero, and I need to solve for lambda. It turns out this factors into the following expression. I figured this out using Wolfram Alpha, and you're welcome to, too. You can also figure it out by hand, knowing that the possible candidates for these roots, these solutions for lambda, are going to be plus or minus the factors of 18, and then using long division. In any case, we now know what our eigenvalues are. They're going to be lambda equals 6, negative 3, and negative 1. Next, let's figure out our eigenvectors. For the eigenvalue lambda equals 6, we're going to be solving the equation a minus 6i times some vector x equals the 0 vector. We can do that by writing down the augmented matrix with a minus 6i here and then the 0 vector here. So that's this matrix. I can solve by converting this to reduced row echelon form. I'm going to omit the details. In fact, I actually solved this using Python. But this is the answer. And from here, we can find the eigenvectors. Let's set x3 as a free variable. We have x1 minus x3 equals 0 and x2 minus x3 equals 0. So the eigenvectors are the form x3, x3, x3. In other words, they're of the form x3 times the eigenvector 1, 1, 1. And I can just use 1, 1, 1 as an eigenvector. A similar computation for lambda equals negative 3 goes like this, and a computation for lambda equals negative 1 goes like this. Let me copy my eigenvalues and eigenvectors here and make some observations. First of all, the eigenvalues for this matrix are all real numbers. This may not seem so surprising to you because we've been working with examples intentionally with real eigenvalues, but it actually is significant. It turns out that for any symmetric matrix, it'll never have complex numbers as the solutions to its characteristic polynomial. It'll always be just all real numbers. So that's the first kind of nice thing about symmetric matrices. The second thing that I want to point out is that all these eigenvectors are orthogonal. Let me give them names, v1, v2, and v3. And now if I take v1 dot v2, I get 0. v1 dot v3 is 0. And v2 dot v3 is 0. This is no coincidence. In fact, this is true for any two eigenvectors of distinct eigenvalues for a symmetric matrix. In this video, we looked at an example that illustrated two important facts that are true about all symmetric matrices. The eigenvalues of symmetric matrices are always all real numbers. No non-real complex numbers at all. And secondly, the eigenvectors of symmetric matrices for distinct eigenvalues are always orthogonal. In other words, if v1 is the eigenvector for eigenvalue lambda 1, and v2 is the eigenvector for eigenvalue lambda 2, and lambda 2 1 is not equal to lambda 2, then v1 dotted with v2 is 0. I'll show you the proofs of these facts in a different video.